Okay, Venus? Okay, Steve. Right. Let's go. This new ultra-long-range Neutroni receiver sure looks very impressive, Matt. I hope it'll sound as impressive. That's what matters. Just think of it. We'll be able to pick up Neutroni transmissions that have never been heard by man before. <laughs> I think something's coming through. Our first reception from the depths of uncharted space. Sounds like some sort of code transmission. Can you get it any louder, Matt? I'll, uh, I'll boost the power. Can you make it out, Steve? Uh, S D C. S D C. That's the old space distress call. Someone's in trouble. But this code hasn't been used for over 20 years. Who do you think it is, Steve? I don't know. But there's only one way to find out. We're going out there? Well, how can we refuse? Have you ever known Steve Zodiac not help anyone in trouble? Very noble, I must say, but what's it all about? Remember, I'm still in charge around here. Oh, yes, sir. It's a distress call on Maddox's new ultra neutroni from uh, an uncharted sector. So? Well, I thought we ought to investigate and see what it's all about. Oh, you did, eh? Well, if this new gadget of Professor Maddox means you're going to investigate every call from any phony neutroni ham, then the sooner it blows a fuse, the better. Well, all I know is that somewhere out there, there's a living creature in distress, and I can't let that call go unanswered. Could you, Commander? Steve's right, Commander Zero. After all, it is our job to save lives and help anyone in need. Well, I tell you, I don't like it. But I guess I'll only be accused of being an old sourpuss if I don't give in. You're wonderful, Commander. Zodiac may be as crazy as a space cat, but no one can say he hasn't got guts. Whatever you do, Nanny, keep a fix on that space distress signal. If there's any change in position, let Colonel Zodiac know at once. Understand? Yes, sir, Commander. Hold course 6230 blue. Well, I think I'll go back and get myself some sleep. Maddock, you'd better get some sleep while the going's good. As soon as we get into uncharted space, we'll have to keep our eyes open. Uh, did you get that, Maddock? Now, what 
do you know? Can you hear that, Venus? Venus? How do you like that? Anyone would think this was the overnight ferry to Mars. We're approaching uncharted space, Steve. Okay, Matt. I'll make final check with headquarters. Fireball XL5 to Space City. Fireball to Space City. We are approaching uncharted space. Will you confirm position of space distress call before we're out of range? Over. Is it still unchanged, 90? Unchanged, sir. Good. Space City to Fireball XL5. Position unchanged. You should be able to pick up the signal on normal neutroni soon after you leave charted area. You're on your own now, Steve. And for Pete's sake, take it easy. Okay, Commander. If we get into serious trouble, we'll call you. You should be able to pick it up on the ultra neutroni. Over and out. Venus, since we're going to go through uncharted space, you'd better keep an eye on the radiation level. The space Geiger counter is all set up, Steve. Good girl. Ah, here we go, into uncharted space. They're on their own now, completely on their own. Got it. That's it. Steve, I picked up the space distress signal on the neutroni. Good. Keep a fix on it, Matt. Radiation level okay, Venus? Okay, Steve. Steve! What is it, Matt? Dead ahead, Steve. A belt of meteorites. Well, can we change course to get around it? No can do, Steve. It's right across our path. Well, then we'll just have to go right through it. But that's crazy, Steve. Turn back. The radiation level is rising fast, Steve. We'll never make it, Steve. If we've come this far, we're not going to turn back now. But it's suicide. Maybe so, but there's someone out there in trouble. We've got to get to them. Radiation level peaking 5.6, increasing. Strap yourselves on your safety couches, both of you. This is going to be a bumpy ride. OK, Steve. You're the boy. Course 9420 red. 9420 red. We'll just plow our way right through the middle. Here's hoping. Here we go. through. Unfasten your safety belts, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I, I don't feel so boys. Jeepers! A monster meteorite, and it's coming straight for us. <laughs> Bit too close for comfort. You were a great help, Robert. You choose the tootiest moments to blow your top.
There you are. There's the source of the distress signal. An uncharted planet. What a beautiful sight. Well, beauty's only skin deep, remember. Let's go take a look what's underneath that mask of mist. We'll leave Robert orbiting, just in case we run into trouble. <laughs> From which direction is the signal coming, Matt? It, uh, it seems to be coming from the base of the volcano. Yeah, we seem to be in some kind of a valley. I sure hope we get out of it pretty soon, before we hit one of these mountains. There you are, Matt, the perfect landing area. I'll go take a look around. Alone? Hadn't we better come too? Now you two stay put and keep an eye on the instruments. Supposing it's a trap. I reckon it's genuine, all right. Anyway, Steve can take care of himself. here by my people, the Space Amazons, for almost five years. I was once their queen, and now, now I'm just a lonely exile. You've been alone all this time? Yes, Steve Zodiac, apart from the yearly visit to bring my supplies. I have been quite alone. At first, at first I thought I would never stand the loneliness. This is fascinating. <laughs> the boss idea is Steve to leave his personal radio on. And then I decided to use all my waking hours in devising a means of making a neutroni transmitter. I've always heard that the space Amazons had brains as well as beauty. Thank you for the compliment, Steve. She's calling him Steve already. How do you like that? So you made yourself a neutroni transmitter. But now that you're here, Steve, I shall have no further use for it. How do you mean? Why, now that you'll be taking me with you. Back to Earth. Back to Earth? But I can't do that. It's impossible. Good for you, Steve. Impossible? You mean, you've come all this way, and now you say impossible to rescue? Yeah, we've risked our lives to answer your call, but we, we can't take you back. We can't even take you off this planet. But why? Why? Because you've been legally imprisoned here on this planet by a properly convened Amazon court of justice. But I only... I don't know what you did to deserve this sentence. It's none of my business. Maybe they were unduly harsh with you, but Amazonia and Earth are both members of the United Planets organization and are pledged not to interfere in each other's internal affairs. Now, if we were to take you off this planet, it would be as bad as... Well, say, letting a convict out of our own jails on the space pen. It would cause a major space diplomatic incident. You 
must see that. It was terribly wrong of me. I can see that now. She's up to something, that woman. Can you... Can you ever forgive me, Steve? <sighs> Don't give it another thought. When I get back to Space City, I'll do all I can to help you. Maybe your people will see reason now and free you. You do that? For me? Sure. You've suffered enough already, I guess. Maybe I deserve it. Let's drink a toast anyway with Kukala, made from the exotic fruits that grow on this planet. My own special recipe. One of the many things I've learned to do while I've been here all alone. Let us drink to justice. And to a very courageous and beautiful lady. Why, thank you, Steve. What was that? What has she done to Steve? Yeah, it doesn't sound too good. Now, listen to this, you Earth people. Oh, yes, I know you've heard everything. Steve Zodiac can't help you. I've taken care of him. And none of you will ever escape from this devil's planet. Understand? Answer her. Keep her talking. It's our only chance. We can't. It's set for one way only. I can destroy you, Earth Woman, and your male companion the winking of an electronic eye. You and your puny little fireball junior. During these years, I have put my excellent Amazon brain to good use. I have learned the secret of controlling the volcano. By bombarding its core with atoms, I can erupt it at will. You will be enveloped in molten lava. Let's get her off the ground. Here we go, Professor. Flying takeoff rocket. What's wrong? We'll have to abandon Fireball Jr. on the jetmobile. Open the escape hatch, Venus. It won't operate, Matt. gonna do, Venus. I'd rather shoot myself with an interceptor than roast to death. That's it. That's the answer. Fire an interceptor. At the volcano? No, no, the cave. We've got to stop that Amazon woman activating the volcano. It's our only chance. But what about Steve? We'll have to take that chance. If we don't stop her, 
We're all gonna die. But... No buts, Venus. Intercept a warning, fast. At least the missile circuit is working. Bearing 2460 red. Ignition system go. Ignition! So, so you dare to challenge Afras, the queen of the Amazons. We'll see who will win. Full power. <laughs> More power. More power. <laughs> Crazy. Volcano stopped. But Steve. He's okay. Look. The next thing I knew, there was some kind of explosion. I came to. The blast from the interceptor. You have a kick like a Martian mule. Uh, I hope I'm never on the receiving end of one of them again. Well, the main thing is you're safe, Steve. Yeah, but uh, how do we get off this planet? Ship away the lava or leave the support legs behind? Neither. You fire the rockets and the lava will melt. But the motors are out of action, Steve. <laughs> it's not surprising you haven't switched the blue circuit on. Just like a woman. Now you be careful, Steve Zodiac, or I may decide to turn nasty like that Amazon girlfriend of yours. <laughs> Okay, Robert, take over. Professor, I'm going into the lounge to make out my report on the Afros case. I'm signing it to the Universe Court of Appeal. Oh, incidentally, how is our prisoner? He safely took to win our space jail, Steve. Well, so long as she keeps out of my way. I've had enough ribbing about her. Kinda thinks she's learned her lesson. <laughs> I'm glad she's off that planet. My guess is she won't try that trick again. <laughs> I wish I was a spaceman, the fastest guy alive. I'd fly you around the universe in Fireball XL5. Way out in space together, compass of the sky. My heart would be a fireball, a fireball. Every time I gazed into your starry eyes We'd take the path to Jupiter And maybe very soon We'd cruise along the Milky Way And land upon the moon To a wonderland of stardust We'll zoom our way to Mars My heart would be 